You can't really be more relaxed just by smelling something, can you? Well, as a matter of fact, you can. Methods of essential oil application affect several systems of the body. We'll begin with the simplest delivery method, inhalation, which is the fastest route of entry to the body for essential oils. The olfactory, or smell system, is where it all begins as we breathe in air and smell. The olfactory bulb is the fastest way to the brain. It's only one synapse. The olfactory system is characterized by relatively direct connections to brain structures implicated in memory and emotion. The amygdala, hippocampus, thalamus, and frontal cortex. If this looks like a complex system, it is. The point is that a lot of reactions take place when smelling or activating your olfactory system. Inhalation is the fastest route of entry to the body for essential oils. During inhalation, volatile essential oil molecules are systemically absorbed as they enter both the brain and the lungs. The amount absorbed, bioavailability, depends on a number of factors, including the specific chemical compound. While a small amount is absorbed through the brain, most is absorbed through the lungs because of the large amount of blood vessels. It's estimated that 30 to 70 percent is actually absorbed. This is known as the bioavailability, the amount of a substance that is available to the body once it enters the circulation. Now back to what happens when we inhale. When we smell, odor molecules enter the nasal cavity where they fit like little puzzle pieces into olfactory receptor cells. Then they're sent as electric signals to the olfactory bulb. And on to the emotional and memory center of the brain, the limbic system. I bet I'm safe to say we've all experienced odor memories. In fact, a smell can activate feelings and memories before a person even identifies the odor. Have you had flashback memories when smelling an odor? Was there emotion associated with the event? Maybe a smell reminds you of sitting in the classroom of your elementary school or walking into your grandma's house. These memories can be pleasant or unpleasant. The point is that we hold smell within our memory. There are genetic variations in human odor receptors affecting our odor perception. How do we know that we smell the same odors as others? Here's an example. Have you noticed your urine having a particularly distinct odor after eating asparagus? Do you think some of us just don't produce the urinary odor? Well, that's true. However, researchers found there's a combination of numerous genetic variations that blunt the ability to smell this particular odor. So for those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, you might be one of the 60% of people who can't detect this odor. We've been talking a lot about the biology behind your sense of smell. Did you know that there is a medical condition called anosmia, where one does not have the ability to smell? Do you think someone with anosmia could still receive beneficial effects from inhaling essential oils? I get this question a lot. Yes, you can still receive some great benefits even if you have anosmia. You might not get the emotional response related to the memory center of the brain. However, there is a whole cascade of events that occur with inhalation. There may be exceptions to this related to injury or diseased areas of the brain that could affect some or part of the cascade. Do you recall that chemical components are responsible for the various effects of essential oils? It's assumed from animal studies that essential oil molecules are transmitted via electric chemical signals to various areas of the brain where they can have an effect at different receptor sites. An example of this is lavender, Lavandula angustifolia, which has been shown to interact with neurotransmitters to reduce anxiety in animal studies. Human studies have shown essential oils effect on the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems Various essential oils administered by inhalation method have been shown to decrease anxiety, heart rate, and blood pressure. EEGs, the measurement of brain waves, have also shown changes indicating calm or meditative states. As we move forward in class, it's important to remember that inhalation is the fastest method of introducing essential oil molecules into the bloodstream. 
and that chemical compounds of essential oils are thought to affect different receptors in the nervous system. Now that you know inhalation is a very effective method of utilizing essential oils, it's time to gain some skills with administering essential oils through direct and indirect inhalation methods. The next videos and readings in this lesson demonstrate techniques that you can follow along with at home. This week's discussion will be an opportunity for you to share your experience with practicing these techniques and identify anticipated experience concerns about using them with patients at home. Let's get started on building your skills.